Of course. So for those of viewers who may not know, what is Demolishing Barriers? So we are going out into the community and talking about inspirational stories, people who've pushed through, broken through, pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, just overcome. And right. so we want to know their stories. Okay, perfect. And then today, Simone is introducing us to a man who overcame the poor decisions of his past to help shape the future of others. His story is one of faith, forgiveness, and friendship. Exactly are we? Uh, truck stop. We got truck stops all over. So you roll from truck stop to truck stop, huh? Yes. <laughs> That's where your work is. <laughs> Mike Simmons owns and operates the Master Wash, a mobile pressure washing company, and he can get just about anything clean. I do homes, do driveways, do dealerships, do the buildings. I also do gas stations. You have a powerful story. Um, I went to Robert E. Lee elementary school, then I wound up going to Sophie B. Wright, got put out of Sophie B. Wright, went to Frederick Graffs in the seventh ward, and that's where I stopped. Stopped going to school in the sixth grade. In the sixth grade. Wow, Mike. Grade. What, did, where, what did you do after the sixth grade? What were you, the streets were teaching you? Yeah, and pretty much the streets was my teacher. And drugs were the lesson. Mike would eventually be shot four times before he was 27 years old and in federal prison doing seven and a half years at the age of 34. In the process of that, I just say, God, you know what? I'm tired, I don't have no else to run. And I remember something happened. I was praying and something happened. I started crying, I pushed away from the, the floor and sat down and I said, something ain't right. And from that day forward, I knew it hit me. It said, Mike, every time you lean on your own understanding, you wind up leaning on jail balls. But behind bars, with a newfound faith and renewed purpose, Mike would forge an improbable friendship. Boyd is a good guy. I met Boyd when we was in the federal prison. That's my brother from another mother, but we got the <laughs> same father. Me and Boyd friendship continued to build, and he was a believer. So that made it even better. So as me and Boyd continue our relationship, um, it just opened doors for the blacks and the whites in that, in that prison because they saw the bond that me and Boyd had and they saw that, you know what, man, it's not about black or white. We made a commitment to one another that this relationship was not just based on being in prison, that it, it was something bigger than that and that once we got out, there would be something to it. We would remain friends and, and interact. What was that bigger thing? Well, it was the Lord. It was, it was Jesus. We, we both reached a point where we were convinced that God had brought us there to meet each purpose. other for that purpose, yeah. After serving their time, Boyd would become president of a local trucking company. Mike started his power washing business, and that greater purpose started to have more and more influence. The boy said, hey, you know what? I'm gonna let you start washing the trucks over here. And me and Boyd sat down, and from that point on, we started going. Mike and I, we, we call it the scarlet letter. When you, when you get out of prison, you have the F on you that the, the world views as, as the F of felon. And the truth is, what God showed us was that F is, is freedom. We're free from all the baggage of our past, and it's an opportunity to start again. Mike's view, or he really felt like God gave him an opportunity to be able to reach out to those people who were felons and give them a job and a yeah. second chance, you know, and not, not be viewed with that scarlet letter. Yeah. About how many men do you think have come through that you that you since you've been out, how many have you mentored? I think about maybe 30 men. 30 men that you've touched. 30 men have come through. I go to the responsibility house and I get the guys that's on drugs, that, yeah. that have been on drugs, yeah. and they're just looking for that chance. Yeah. And I get them, they come, and these men, you'd be surprised what it does for them. And they don't only get to be able to wash cars and make money. They get a chance to be able to see somebody who been there, been to the bottom, somebody who been on drugs, yeah. somebody who know what it's like for the world to give up on you. You done burn bridges and here God can do a miracle in your life. Wow, so talk about pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. I mean, yeah. what was it like hearing Mike's story? You know, when Mike came, the first time that I met Mike, he came and did a presentation for his power wash business at our staff meeting. And he literally moved two to three of my guys to tears. He's so humble. It, right. that, that's what speaks to me the most about Mike is sure. that he is humble. Right. 
But and quite the story. And, and, and you know, on, on a lighter note, tell us how you met him. This is so great. I love this. <laughs> Mike and I met at a red light on Causeway, 7 a.m. I was coming off the Causeway. He was at the stoplight, and I rolled down my window, and I yelled, hey, dude, throw me your number. I need to know. <laughs> how to get in touch with you to do power wash and he said yeah. excuse me I he's said, like who is this crazy lady yeah i said what's your phone number <laughs> yeah. and so when i got him on the phone i said hey i have demo diva and he said are you the demo diva that's cute and so he's been cleaning my equipment but okay yeah gotcha. that's how we that's met so at funny. a red light I, I was gonna say this is such like <laughs> typical new orleans fashion you know what i mean it's uh, just that's so funny okay but cool he's he is a tremendous man one of the things that uh, the takeaways of my interview with him mm -hmm. is that he said two things that changed me and, and how I thought. He, when he said, when he went to jail and he saw men leaning on bars, black men leaning on bars, he said that changed his life. And the second thing about Mike was no one taught Mike how to speak positive to himself. He said he never had a father or a friend, and he learned the art of self-talk. I see, that's and very important. self-talk is what got him through to say, Mike, you're better than this. Thank you so much.